Welcome to another video by Daniel and John and today we're looking at a project involving a Discovery 2 TD5 2002 and we've got the leaking sunroof and as you can see there there's the dripping water unfortunately what it does it drips onto the you can see here there so that is going to cause us uh, problems uh, there's been a previous repair with uh, lots of mastic on the uh, roof uh, we just need to sort it out because it's getting worse sometimes it drips through the light area um, we've done a fair bit of research and people say it could be block pipes uh, broken tray inside uh, seal so we've ordered a few bits in but we're gonna hopefully take some of this off which we'll come back to you in a minute and also see how we get on with this mastic remover as well this sealant remover see if it's any good because that's a frequent problem up there people seal them up and if you want to repair them you need to remove it carefully basically anyway uh, we'll see you in a bit thank you yep. all right so welcome back and now we're on outside the vehicle and uh, we've gone and bought some no-nonsense sealant remover from uh, Screwfix. Uh, simple instructions basically how to use it. Uh, what somebody's done in the past on the top here because I've got a leaking sunroof is they've sealed this edge here with something and sometimes it's just the gasket that goes. There's a load of mastic here. You can see it pooling there. And it's obviously running in various places. This feels wet, so I think this is where it's running in as well. So we're going to put this on. Apparently, you leave it 15 minutes. Uh, let's have a look. I will drop it down in a minute. I'm just showing you. There is a brush with it. It's a clear liquid. Uh, I'd wear some gloves if I was you. Um, and it says to wipe off afterwards. Just read the instructions. They're fairly clear, to be honest. This was about four pounds. You get 100 mils. Quite a bit in there. Uh, and we'll come back to you and see the results in 15 minutes. Thanks for watching. We've applied the sealant remover, this stuff, and it's removing all the sealant out of everything. Done quite a good job. Yeah, it's done an excellent job. So if you've got, got, if you got a sunroof that's had loads of sealant in it, then uh, this stuff is the stuff to use. This little orange thing we're using is a orange plastic razor blade you can buy from them yeah. so doesn't damage the paint the other thing i'd say this stuff hasn't damaged the paint on the vehicle no i put it on hasn't damaged the plastic we've got a cloth of us as well but so, um, don't get me wrong it's taken a few applications of it but it's best to do it gently and um, without damaging anything so it does lift it all off right so we managed to get them silicon sealant out it was all in here, still need a bit of a clean up. It was all down here and all there. Used a Stanley knife to cut it away and get some of that silicon remover in there. The sunroof is, is working. I'll show you. So it's a manual one on this, it's working. The only thing is, is uh, when it was sealed up, there's a rubber seal that runs along here. It hangs down and then seals when it's shut. That's actually attached to the mastic, the silicon that was in here. So unfortunately that tore off. But uh, that's no big deal because I've got another one. So that's, that's for the operator. As you can see it here, look, see? This, this stuff, we'll replace that. Um, so, Just needs a bit of a tweak that does it's not been used so um i need to remove the indoor trim so it's things like this this the handles and then all, all this stuff up here this has all got to come off for the um headliner to be dropped um i have removed one piece already this piece here which just goes around just goes around the bottom of this to tidy it up and it has this little joining piece so um so there's there's two two things for doing this video number one was to fix the leaking that was coming from here because obviously it'll make the car damp and it gets into electronics etc but also decided to fix the sunroof so we could actually use it in summer just let a bit of heat out 
So now we can get that open. That bit is done apart from the seal. But now we need to just remove the headline in to find out why the water's coming down here. There's some drainage things here, like a drainage channel of a spout which runs about here. And it goes all the way down here. So we'll do that and I'll follow up. So the A-pillar trims are out. Actually, there you go. Here. They sort of got clip there, clip there, clip there, and all the wiring. They're just these things. This one seems to have a thing of insulation that the driver's side one was missing, but it's not a big deal when they just have a little tweeter in there and just plugs in there. So that's that's an easy one to remove. And then the next thing I'll move on to is removing this. And that looks like just a load of um, Phillips screws, to be honest. So, so these sun, sun visors, it's got three bolts up there. And then uh, the next thing I've removed, it's a bit dirty because we've been like gloves and stuff. The next thing I've removed is the uh, sunroof handle, just one Phillips screw. Literally in there, and then I'll remove this piece. And I guess I'll have to remove this light and stuff. Right, so with them some visors, there was these little things which hold in place. Two screws that go in the middle, one, one in the middle, sorry. And then they like push through the headlining. It's just a little tall system. Um, I've got all the screws out of this. There they are. Those things, some of them are a bit stubborn to get out. They're sort of trapped at the top. You just put your finger with the screwdriver. And now, once they're all released, it's just this piece here. There's something in there holding it on. So I need to remove that little piece and then try and get it off. That little trim piece has been removed. It's got this really big screw. And it's got just a spade connector on here for like an earth and a plug that goes in there. These things, they're easy to take off. So the next thing I'll take off is this, probably these, these at the front, at the back, then I'll take off this. All right, so the handles, are these little, uh, Plastic covers. And just pop them off with a little screwdriver carefully. And one here looks like it's sort of attached. But this one here came off. I think it's just because it's old. And uh, to get the actual handles off, it's a little um, seven mil socket. So get all those off. So that's all the front and rear handles removing there's this little I think sensor and that just has some clips either side and a little thing I think be really careful with this really careful when you take it out I think this um, detects if people are in the vehicle or not right so got this trim off just show you what it looks like the top one there top clip these things either side, the top and at the bottom, and they actually go behind this rubber seal on the door. So you need to take all this off just about here, and you can pull it off, and you're left with that. And that did take me a little thing to get off. Um, I think I'm gonna have to leave this on here just like this for now because the headline is out of the way of it. Um, because that seat belt bolt is, is on like some sort of spacer and that won't fit won't fit through here because it's too narrow so I just tried it so we'll leave it like that for now we can get the headliner down so that's it's no big deal right so that's all the front done so now I've got to remove this rear section middle section I think I've got to remove this first there's a, there'll be a screw in there looks like there's a Screw up there as well, probably a real long one with a wash on it. And then after that, I've got to remove this. And 
maybe then, then maybe that part of the back and then it should come out then. So that's the handle removed, Phillips screw there. I've also removed the trim piece that goes all the way around, had the same connecting piece, same connecting piece there. So that, but this looks like it, I thought this came down off the off the headliner, but this looks like it's part of it. So I think this is like stuck on and that screw just holds it up, which is fine, we'll leave this on. So the next bit I've got to take off is all this. So this trim has got these little plastic studs in and they look like that. They're like ribbed. You will need a trim removal tool, ideally, because you'll probably break them. Well, this one here, these lower ones, I put a clean screwdriver just in the corner. Just enough to get this trim removal tool underneath. But at the top, it looks like you can't get that underneath, doesn't it? But if you push it like that, you get a load of space. So you can easily, easily get that in there if I can show you. Oh, that's difficult. There we go. See that? So that's, that's, that's what that looks like there. You need to get it in there a little bit more and just lever it out. Look. It makes that sound a little bit when you get this out. It's not breaking it, it's just popping it out. There we go, there we go, see? So, yeah. And once you've got the trim studs out here and here, you need to remove this door, door um, seal, let's see. And it doesn't come out straight away, it's got a bit of a lip. I reckon this, this is holding it in a little bit. If you look in there, as a stud, this thing was attached to this trim piece, so that would need to be put back on, and that just holds it in there. And then it sort of is coming out, but it's gonna be a bit of a, just need to have a look, pull it and look, rather than just pull it a little bit and look, and then try and get it out, rather than just yanking at it, you might break it. A few more items removed from the boot and the sensor. Three belt trims. I've, I'm laying everything up. This is quite a lot of bits coming off. It is fairly obvious where it goes, but it's still best to do that. And uh, some screws and screws caps that go there. These are all the uh, studs that go in here. Um, another thing I've got to remove is the seat belt thing. And then I've got to remove this thing, these headrests. I think this is just pushed up on your own studs. So we'll see somehow that's up there and then it should all come out. So that trim piece I was just talking about that's on these rear seat headrests, it's no big deal. It's got these little flaps that go on it. It's literally a load of these. Um, and all I did was I just put a trim tool at the side, levered this out, and just give it a good tug. So that's what that looks like. And then the screws, these headrests have just got these bolts. I'm not sure what size they are yet. They might be, it could be eight, well, whatever this thing is, seven mil maybe. No, they're a little bit bigger than that. Could be 10 mil. And then really, it looks like the whole thing will come out. Take this piece out first and the trim above it. Got to take that light down as well. So, the two bolts that go through there. Come on. There you are. Eight millimeter. But, it won't just come off of that because under this seal, boot seal, there's a Torx bolt here. Go straight up. 
and the one I've got that fits it, TPS 27. So I'll just remove the other headrest. The next thing to come out is a boot light. Got the headrest out. This is it here. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't come out with like clips either side. It's got these bolts. Put a little screwdriver in, in there. Inside you'll see two holes and it's just got this connector. Uh, there's a little nuts. Nylock nuts. They're in there well. And the socket size for them is eight millimeter. There's a screw in the cap there, but everything seems to be loose. So what I'm going to do to get this out, this whole trim, remove this seat belt. I can get can get that through there, unlike the front ones. And this here, this bolt, it's got these little covers. They just um, pry off like everything else. And it's a uh, 17 socket. these pieces just pull out just wiggle them around a little bit and the only thing you need to do is what we talked about a minute ago is pull that through and um, that's that but the headlining is nearly down you can see it's pretty loose but I uh, just need to take out these these little things this this needs to uh, glue them back on take out them and it should be out Right, so the liner's out. Um, took them things out and put it at an angle with a bit facing towards the bottom, a bit facing towards the top, and they got it out through the back of the tailgate. You, you can push it together, but that was the easiest way. This light above the passenger seats in the rear, not the boot, but behind the driver, take this out first. You need to just, just get these clips, because otherwise there's a wire that comes down from the ceiling and it's like glued, some sticky tape and it's glued. So take this out first, disconnect the wire and that's, that's what you want to do. So now it's out. Basically what it looks like. That's the rear light cable. I'll show you everything in a minute. This is the rear sunroof, but it's not a problem with this one, but we'll show you what it looks like anyway. That's the, this is the drainage channel, these are these things, these pipes. There's quite big rubber pipes actually, they run all the way down here, down near the tailgate, tail lights. Um, and that's, it's just a repeat of the other side. Pretty much real thick rubber. I don't think it would be as big as that. These are fine, they're not cracked. Um, okay, let's look at the front. So this is the front. Same thing basically, metal, metal that, Torx bolts. We'll take them out in, in a later part of the video. And uh, this is leaking. It drip fills up here and drips down here, here. So there's obviously been some sort of repair here. Ah, that's uh, what the issue is. There's been some sort of silicone repair and uh, it's come away. So that's where our leak is, but this will be replaced. The other side, probably just replace that anyway, just as a matter of course, because because the spouts here go. See these little plastic bits that go on? That's going. So that's our problem. That's why it's leaking. And uh, this runs down here, so it's here. And this, run, this runs all the way down here. Runs down there, so runs all the way down here somewhere. So there we go. That's why the sunroof is leaking. So it would have cracked before someone's done a repair. It's not lasted because things like this don't last. Um, so that's our problem. And then we'll, next part of the video, next few parts of the video, will be us taking this off, taking the top thing off, putting some RTV sealant round. Replacing these bits, I've got these on order. You can get these. And um, just making sure these pipes are clear as well. But all that, all that work just for, for that. So 
So this, uh, so we looked at the one on the left side, which was had a bit of mastic and it's come off. But the one on the right, I was just looking at it a minute ago, and the plastic has um, completely sheared off inside on here. It's just really rough. So that's, that's just sheared off by itself due to age. So now we've actually got to remove the sunroof tray. Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve of these little bolts. And they're a T20, Torx 20. They come out really easily. Just get that on there. Just make sure you use the right ones so it fits in there nice. So yeah, they come out really easy. To get the sunroof out, I'll come back to you. So the tray's down, just all them little bolts, but not only that, the uh, mechanism for moving it, it's got some bolts either side. Those, those, those go through here and hold the tray on as well, so you need to move them. And they are also a uh, Torx 20. So the top of the top of the sunroof is that you're left with this. It's just got to be cleaned and a new uh, sealant put on. And it just literally pushes up from the top. And then you, you're left with this whole unit. And we've got to replace a seal on that as well. We'll show that in a minute. So now the sunroof is out. I need to obviously do a few bits on it, like place a seal, clean it up, etc. I just need to check that these pipes, the water is actually should be draining in this area. Don't know exactly where it goes, but I'll, um, I'll have a guess. So it runs up here. It doesn't doesn't run down here. I did think it did, but it doesn't. It runs. Oh, that just come off. Yeah, so it doesn't run down this way. It runs behind it in there. So I just need to check. This is draining because there's no point refitting it and it not not um draining properly so i'm gonna try and use this plunger it's like a liquid suction comes with a clear pipe normally sealy that should fit in there just pump some hot water down and see if we get it down then i'll let you know all right so i've put some hot water down with this thing um the only thing is a little bit of dowel in it as a joining piece because where the drain thing on the uh, sunroof tray snapped off it's also snapped off inside and it snapped off all the way along so we've got to heat this off and take it off take the this plastic out inside hopefully the pipe is long enough but i'll just show you where it drains because it drains it's an odd place actually it's not where you think it is so I've, I've put a load of water down it and it's draining freely so we know the pipe's not a problem well it, so it, it drains if you can see that from there bait so we're, this is the step the mud guard the front wheel well step support and that's it there it just drains from that the pipe doesn't come out it just drains from that hole there so just make sure that's clear of mud So now we've made sure that there's water flowing from the top to the bottom on each side, it's time to just clean these pipes up. So this was what was left of the drip tray uh, collection spout, just inside inside there. Um, the easiest way I've found of doing that is just a hot air gun, not directly on it, because it might melt the pipe, but just underneath it or in different directions and it's just pulled out, so it's nice and clean now. It's a little bit big, but we'll have to figure out what we're going to do with that it might just fit that's how it fitted before hopefully it's not too big for the new one but we'll figure something out 
So this is what we got, just to show you. So that's working, that's working perfect. Um, that's done. What is this syringe again? It says it on there what it is. Uh, it's a, uh, let me show it. Sealy 500 mil. 500 mil oil suction syringe composite body. Model, what? and that's the model AK47. Always handy to have How one. How much for this? It wasn't a fortune, was it? About te a tenner, but it's tenor, always handy so it's to probably have. Worth, well worth having, even just to do this without any mess, because you get the pressure in the hot water. So now we've flushed the pipes a few times, verified they're, they're draining. I've been to the other side as well. We've put, yeah, let's get rid of that. We've um, we put a bit of put a bit put a bit of this stuff down there just to clean any grime and residue yeah. that might be built up. Yeah, because toilet clean does remove scale and muck and stuff. Doesn't have to be the posh stuff. It can be anything. Just put some. This is like in. an eco-friendly one. That's what but we've got now. So what we've got so it's the lady's choice of the house. Anyway, we've used it. So um, next thing is, as I said in the previous couple of parts, I think we'll just put them up there. Next thing is to sort out the sunroof. Sort out the sunroof seal and um, just what, clean my... things up and put it back on, etc. If anyone's interested, obviously, I think we go on angle a minute, we've got a big hole in the roof now. How have you sealed that off? We've just used a bin liner. Yeah, just used to show you. And what we've used is uh, frog tape, the thick green stuff. Just use clear liner or whatever you've got, frog tape, so it won't take the paint off and just a couple and of bits on top. frog tape absorbs moisture as well, so that's why we've used it. It's quite good stuff, we've used it before. Yeah, um, this stuff is really, it's not cheap, but it's, there's different versions, but we just use the green stuff for everything. So it's that one. Yeah, just stop paint block, it'll stop moisture getting in, into the tape at the edge of it. So that'll work for two or three days. Right. right. Okay, so we're inside now, because um, the weather's a bit cold. We've got the sunroof uh, drip tray off. And we're just gonna show you a few bits on it. So the water comes down into here like this at an angle and it goes into these drainage ch channels. And on the end there is where it's snapped off, snapped off there, and it's also snapped off there. Um, and by, if you just shine that in there, and by the looks of it, these little plastic pieces, I've got these coming. I'll put a link in the description where you can buy these. Um, there are different versions of these available. There's a 3D printed and a injection molded version available. I've gone for the injection molding because it's apparently it's a lot stronger. So what we need to do, we need to take these out, clean all this up, and then we're going to use some, well, we, first of all, we're going to use some sealant remover on this. Hopefully that'll take that off. And we're going to use some JB World Black Silicon. It takes about an hour to go off and that's why we're doing it inside. It does everything here. So it looks like they've put sealant underneath the thing to hold it in around the sides. But if we flip it over, it looks like they've also put sealant like here. Yeah. This white stuff is a repair that was done. So there's a big gap at the top. Don't need to do anything with that. So what we're going to do is just going to mimic it, and then once we've got them in, we'll, um, this is the other one as well, we'll show you. So snap to clean off. The seal at the back is just to seal the... Just to the keep the slight gap. It's keep got, it on, yeah. yeah. That's what it's for. Right, so we'll come back to you when we've um, done that piece, and then the next piece off, that is the seal on the actual, for the glass. Okay, so we've removed these pieces from the drip tray. They literally just sort of come forward and out um, as you can see just got some stuff on there working at the moment we'll just let that work and then we'll clean it up completely and put the new ones in um, this is the top of the sunroof and there's actually a seal on it which goes all the way around but when the when the rest of it was sealed in some of the sealant got onto this and ripped the seal and we removed it so we've got to remove it put a new seal on it um, it's got these little Torx bolts, one there, there and there, and they're a Torx 20. And, but what we've done is uh, we just marked up where the bolts are at the moment because they've got a little bit of play in them. I guess there's a little bit of adjustment. So we'll just mark it up just in case. Um, uh, Torx 20. And undo them. 
use that. You've used that paint mark. You can probably yeah. use a little bit of tibet, but that's yeah. more accurate. Yeah. On the glass. Okay, so we've got the glass out at the top of the sunroof housing. Um, the seal, just for reference, lives in this sort of channel all the way around. But it looks like um, when someone's tried to seal it up, they put like some sealant on the top of the seal and the glass has then been pushed down onto it and it's and it, most of the seal is with the glass so we've got to clean up clean the glass up uh, clean this up then uh, put the seal in and we'll show you where we are with it just to be perfectly clear when the seal is put back in it's put back in this it's put back in this top housing and not this has stuck been to the glass a, um, some sort of repair where they've used the seal and stuck it on the glass yeah the reason why it's on the glass as i said is because of um because it's been bonded, it's been there's been a bead of something put on. It's been closed and it's suckered onto it. Um, that's the reason. Okay, so we've cleaned all the glass up, both sides, so it's nice and um, smooth. Uh, we've cleaned cleaned all this channel out. There's a, cleaned all this out. It's not perfect. There was a lot of sealant, but we managed to get it reasonably cleaned up. So now we're putting this uh, seal in. So if you are going to put replacement seal in, basically it looks like that. There's a flat piece on top, then it runs in, and this here, and this channel, channel that it goes into. There's a like a see that piece here. This this piece here pushes in there, but you need it's friction fit, so you need a bit of pressure. So if you just hold that a minute, film it. So you can see you've got this this piece. So what we want to do is get it round, get it in there like that. Now I I use like this tool, this uh, trim removing tool, just to get it right in there. You can feel when it's in there, but it is it is in there. Because that trim removal tool allows you to put pressure on the base as well. It's like this piece it. here, um, and you just do a section at a time. You need something to just to, to push it down but not, not damage it because I see you don't want to but you would probably want to get it in with your fingers. Start it off with your fingers and then push it home with that <coughs> tool. Basically it needs to be like an L shaped tool you yeah. get some pressure on. Anything that you can put pressure on it without guess, do you know what even damaging it. A spoon folded over might work. Yeah. Because yeah. it's friction fit. We haven't put any sealant in here and the reason why we sort of haven't done it is first off the sealant first off the seal is friction fit and to be completely honest we weren't 100 percent sure about it when we first started doing it. obviously we know we're on the right track now and we didn't want to get a load of sealant everywhere and mess there's nothing worse than that so that's kind of a nice yeah, that's good. That's not too bad. Even that's out overuse. So we'll get the seal in. Final clean on this with a surmiser probe, and we'll get the glass back in. Parts have arrived, haven't they? Yeah, and then we'll get the the drip collect the water collection either side. I will just show you. So hold that down. Yeah. Bit. So our our replacement parts arrived. So it's from a company called Emberton Imperial Limited. Uh, EmbertonImperial.com. I ordered it from eBay. Um, took a few days to deliver. A tract 48, raw mail. Um, now these ones are injection molded and not 3D printed and I went for the high quality ones. There's a right hand one and a left hand one. I'll put the link in the description to this in case you want to buy them. There are some differences with these. Uh, Design and Development Engineering Limited. Yeah, so do you want to discuss these differences? So if you look at the original part there, you see it's all smooth. Yeah. And then the, the little spout come out of there. There's not a lot retaining it. There's not a lot supporting it. That's the spout that's um, snapped off, off there. Yeah. Now if you look at what these guys have done, they've been a bit clever. They've created a little well here, which is quite good. So the water definitely goes out, but what they've been able to do is raise this a bit, 
to make it thick and if you see there it's reinforced you can see here. it underneath as well if you show it underneath yeah it's all reinforced yeah. on the weak point whereas here it isn't it's just flat so they've obviously looked at the problem and resolved it so well done to uh, Emberton so um, probably best going with the injection molded ones rather than the 3D printed ones. I'm not saying they won't last, but when you're doing a job like this, you want to make sure it's yeah, do it done once. properly because it's so much work. So let's get this seal in and then we'll move to the uh, drip tray with putting those uh, collection bits in. Okay, so we've got the seal in. The important thing to note is to get the corners in and then to pull it back and then push it in as you're doing it. And underneath, there's a piece underneath. See that piece under my finger? That, make sure that's in this this area here. This channel, make sure there's n n nothing nothing rubber. With, see like that those lines. Make sure there's nothing like that shown. Push it's pushed right down. We'll just tweak that in a second. But yeah, that's that's a seal installed. Wasn't too hard. We didn't use any any silicone or anything like no, that. Friction, friction fit. fit. Yeah. Okay, so we're moving on a bit further. So we've got all this unit back together, the top piece, the glass in, got the seal back together as previously shown, got the bolts in, hand tight, because you don't want to crack the glass. Everything's looking good. New seal in. New seal, it's all looking good. Um, so the next thing we need to do is, so we, we need to install these basically, but we've cleaned all this out here. So we use a bit of isopropanol, wire brush, and uh, screwdrivers so have scratched a little bit, but no big deal. What we're gonna do is we've scuffed it up. I'm gonna just spray some paint on there, let that set. And then we're gonna install these pieces that we talked about earlier. So they just literally slide in like that. Got a little tab there. And that sort of tab goes behind the metal. And you just need to sort of get them sort of wedged, wedged in there. Something so like that. We will probably put our silicon on there, won't we? Our JB weld stuff and I don't want to put a rivet in or anything and we will probably just clamp that down until it goes off. We were yeah we were thinking about putting a rivet in but of course um, that introduces more leaks so we don't want that. And we've got metal here and potential rust area as well. So we're so gonna we're gonna spray all this up so it doesn't rust and we're gonna put a load of sealant in here and a little bit underneath at the side. And just clamp it down for a couple of hours. And then it says on here that it it takes about an hour to dry, one hour, so we'll do that and once we've got them in we'll um, come back to you. Okay, so we've got the um, little uh, pieces in each side, as you can see uh, we've sort of put the mastic all the way around and um, put it on the back as well, but a bit, a bit on the back did squeeze through when we when we pushed it through, put some under, we put some underneath and it did squeeze through to the back, but we sealed absolutely everything up. Uh, we, we spray painted a few areas on this as well that were scratched when we were cleaning it up to stop rust. Um, and we've got this weather, weather strip, because when we took it off, there was like this thin weather strip on the top here. I think that just stops things getting in. So this is now ready to go back on the car. Just say the weather strip, it's nothing special. Some screw fix, that's it there. Um, I found weather stripping on screw fix that was the same um, width and height as the as the stuff that was on here. And it's adhesive one side. The stuff you'd use in your doors and windows to give you a bit of draft proofing. But it, it's the same stuff, so no need to buy anything special. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so the next job now is to clean the top of the uh, sunroof, uh, the, on the roof, the area where the sunroof sits in the top part, and then put some sealant on the top part, press it down, and then sandwich all this together and we'll come back to you in that part. All right, so we're gonna refit the top of the uh, sunroof, but we put this like plastic sheeting and this duct tape, so it doesn't, uh, doesn't take the paint off. And we've just got, to, uh, just got to clean this edge up. It's got a bit of foam and adhesive, and then we'll put the sealant on the thing, we'll show that in the next part. So this edge is all cleaned up as much as we can get it really, because it's old, it's staining. It's nice and smooth. And then we're gonna use this stuff, Pure Effects 40. Ever build. Yeah. And um, we're gonna put it on the inside edge 
all, all around here and then because this gets clamped down by the drip tray at the bottom so we'll start putting some of that on now what we've done with this we've kept it inside till we've needed it to keep it warm Believe it or not, it's the 6th of December. So although we used uh, JP, JB World um, RTV sealant on the drain parts, we're using this stuff here, and you, you will need you will need a fair amount of it. You'll, you'll need at least a tube. And a cloth. And a cloth, just in case you get any anywhere. Now, I would say with this you need a fairly decent uh, sealant gun, elastic gun as well. Something that's going to push it out nice and easy. Someone did actually say about, um, I read somewhere that on this seal, the seal that goes on the glass, to put a piece of, bit of, bit, a little bit of silicon on it, just to stop the, the seal sticking to the glass, which is quite a good idea because the seal is, um, is friction fitted. It's pushed into this channel. So that's definitely worth doing. So I'll do that as well once we get it on. And working obviously. Just for a bit like longevity. So we'll come back to you when we've fit that on top and got the drip tray in place. Right, welcome back guys. We've got the uh, sunroof tray in, all, um, all, all in. Tighten down, it needs a bit of a clean, but we'll do that later. Just putting these pipes on. As you can see, John's had a, he's got an air gun. So best, best thing to put these pipes on is just to heat them up a little bit. Um, and then put them on and then they sort of cool down and they stay. It's not it's not like it's under pressure, so you're not gonna get pressure coming out. So that's on there nice and firm. Um I think I think the job is done really. Yeah, it looks good. You've got yeah. that one in there, and that one in there. It's easy enough to get on. Easy enough Keep to get it about on. that much away from the pipe. Don't get right next to it, put it on low heat. Yeah, don't get well. don't get don't get right next to it. Put it just if warm you, it up. It warms up real easy as well. If you haven't got a hot air gun. Hot uh, water will do, wouldn't it? Cup of boiling water. I think a hairdryer would do as well. Possibly, but a cup of boiling water, just leave it in, definitely work for you. Um, yeah. I've used that before. And if you want to make it real easy to go on, a bit of washing up liquid on the plastic or in the tube. Yeah. Right, guys, so that's everything back together now. We've just got to put the headline and everything, but you know how that all comes apart in the uh, first part of the video. So we're going to end the video here. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions about this, um, or where to get the bits, let me know. I'll put the links to all this stuff in the description. Thanks.